Hi, everybody. My name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you could join us. We are very grateful that you would spend the time with us to read this. We are now in numbers, so we've gone through three books now, which is a crazy thing to think that you've gone through all these weeks with us, all these days with us, learning the Torah, and we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys taking the time and just spending it with us. Even though we can't hear you, we read your comments. We appreciate your thoughts and your prayers and everything you guys have for us. And, uh, yeah, we're just a giant family here, and that's what we're supposed to do as a family is supposed to recite the Torah. We're supposed to read on our minds. When we wake up, we're supposed to read it. We're supposed to write on our hearts. We're supposed to tell it to our children, and that's what we're doing. We are waking up. We are beginning our day with the Torah. Yes, Eli, what is the Shema? A hero Yisrael, hear and obey in Yahuwah's words, basically. What does it say? Uh, let's see. Hero Yisrael, Yahuwah is one. Uh, you shall love yeah, Yahuwah. With all your heart, mind, and soul, and with all your strength. Yeah, and so, uh, Eli, get up to the mic here, if you would, please, so we can hear your... Your kind little quiet voice, I would appreciate it. All right, well, thank you guys, every much. How's how are you guys doing today? Good, good. good. Everyone okay? Yep. Everyone survived yesterday. Yep. yep, a little bit. All right, we're into numbers here. Eli has not uh, read into the numbers. Um, he didn't review what we did yesterday for a review. I guess for an overall review, where are we at right now? So we've gone over basically. <clears throat> yeah, beginning it, we went through creation, Adam and Eve, Noah, the flood. Uh, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the 12 tribes going into Egypt, coming out of Egypt. And so basically Moshe has been given all the commands of what they're supposed to do. They've been given, they were on Mount Sinai, they built the Michigan. And now they're on year two of basically out of Egypt under Yah's hand, traveling through the wilderness. And so now they were basically yesterday, yesterday in the chapter reading, we learned that they basically numbered the entire tribes, all the tribes that could go out to the army, so all the men that would go out to war to battle to defend Israel on their journey, they basically numbered everyone to make a count of everyone. Yeah, so they did a big poll. They did their own little kind of selective service. And before we get going, let's um, let's go over a couple of uh, things that I want to talk about. Ori Pup was speaking, and this was... This was um, not my dog going crazy. Ori Pup talks about um, when we were discussing Brother Shaul and uh, you know his uh, his writings. Um, I'd like to remind everybody, and yeah, this is absolutely true. That Peter tells us you got to be very careful. He says, "I think you're like what does he say? You're weak or something? If you misunderstand mm, something that I agree. something, if you want to misunderstand Paul's writings, Brother Shaul." And you you say the laws and statutes and commands of, of Yah are gone. It says you're you're kind of a weak minded person. So we don't want to be weak minded. We we want to understand that our Creator does not change. He has never changed. His laws, statutes, and commands are good until heaven and earth pass away. And you know I still look outside my door and I still see earth out here. I still see heaven up there. If it has passed away, uh, I have yet to figure this one out. And something that also, if you go through the books, how Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, those are all different tribes of people outside of Yashorel that he, that Paul had converted to Torah that had shown the light of Messiah and that basically they wrote to him first, had a whole bunch of questions, and he wrote back to them and made it into a book. So a lot of things won't make sense because you don't have the first letters from them to Paul. So when he explains saying, don't feel bad, don't feel judged about what you eat by these people because they were into eating pork, they were into this, and now that they're like not eating pork, they're like, their family's judging them. It's like when you go come into Torah and you tell your family you're not going to celebrate Christmas anymore, you're almost uh, outed as a family member. It's the same way it was. They were getting outed for not eating pork, so they wrote to Paul saying, what do we do? And he said, don't, don't be judged on what you eat, food or drink. You have, you have Yahuwah, right? And things like that. So you didn't have the first part, so it didn't make a lot of sense. But when you understand it in context that he was actually writing to people that had questions. Yeah, and it's like some of the stuff he says. I mean, he talks about like you, you to be a uh, considered like a widow, you have to have like egg, certain things. I mean, Paul, Brother Shaw basically set up his own set of doctrine. Um, you know, basically he says like women shouldn't speak. In congregations, and I've never found that in the Torah anywhere. Uh, you know, we don't see w female priests or anything of the sort. But the rules and regulations he puts down are for a time and a place where these little congregations, these little ecclesias that he was setting up, had questions. And like Cade said, um, you're only seeing one half of it. It makes zero sense when you're only reading the end of a reply. I mean, they could have had like four or five letters together and all you're seeing is one letter reply and people will make an entire doctrine on that. So it is very important we study our, to show ourselves approved unto to Yah, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Um, now this comes on another one. We have grandma here 
and we love the grand. Um, she's our favorite grandma, and um, I know there's there's a lot of grandmas out there, but we we actually adopted her, and she adopted us. We've never seen her before, but she is our uh, we're we're calling her our, our new biological grandma. Um, if not from from this family, from another family, but we're, we're considering her that. And um, like all of you guys, we consider all of you guys our family. The Clarissas and the Carlas and the Ancient Path Remnants and, and all of you guys. You you guys are all part of this this family here. And we, we do appreciate you guys and your conversations with us and things. And so this is what she said. She said, good morning, first family. Good morning, first morning family. A couple of questions on Paul. Who decided his name change? Why is almost half of the New Testament books um, his, you know, his, his books, uh, keep me, can keep me confined to the narrow way, Abba, Matthew 18, two through four. And yeah, that is a, that is a very good question as going, I don't know the actual answer for that. I do know when I was in, um, Christianity that, um, they were like, yeah, once he converted, uh, brother Shaw changed his name to Paul. And, you know, there is something to this, the fact that Paul is like a, um, tent maker, it is actually not a, uh, it could very well not even be a name. I mean, his name is probably Shaul. And, you know, so he, he changed his name or something changed. I don't know where that went down, but um, does anyone, anyone One here? One thing I will note is that in Holy Scriptures, if you if anybody reads the Holy Scriptures, it still says Shaul all throughout his book. It says Shaul and Emissary of Yahushua. Yeah. And not Paul. And uh, I think the story was, well, he changed his name was so he didn't, like, scare the new born Christians or something like that. The new family yeah, Christian. Pretty, it was something. Was, I don't. I don't think that's biblical at all. I don't think there was anything biblical to that. Yeah, and you know, as far as uh, why did he almost write all the New Testament books? You know, that is a very, very good question. I am going to post a video today by Dr. Stephen Pigeon, and it's called "The Apocrypha: To Read or Not to Read." And you will learn if you guys make it to the very end of it. And I strongly suggest you guys do. Um, if you make it to the very end of it, you will see that Brother Shaul is not who we thought Brother Shaul was. There's a lot more to it. And one thing that I can add, and I haven't found this book, but I asked Nicole to find this book, and I don't know if she found it or not for me, but I had bought it years ago on Kindle, and um, it was historians, and it was a guy that wrote a story about all these historians that had studied up on the works of Brother Shaul, and they read it in um, in his name, and they read it in Greek, and they, they were basically comparing the writings of Brother Shaul with basically if you put all together like and this is this is the example that is if i wrote a love letter to my wife if it wasn't me that wrote a love letter to my wife she would absolutely know it would be things that i would not say writing styles that i would not do it is extremely hard to emulate somebody that you know intimately and um so when the historians were out there and they looked at all of the different books of the bible they believed that more than half of the 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 books that are attributed to Brother Shaul were not written by him based upon how it was written, the punctuations, all the grammar, everything. It was totally different. And so I I think we've been, you know, led to believe a lot of evil stuff. And when you when you see that video with Dr. Stephen Pigeon, you will see how they they basically took like 70 books of the Bible out. All the good stuff, you know, Enoch and First Maccabees, Second Maccabees, um, uh, Jasher, Jubilees, all of those ones. Those were all ripped out of the Bible. That they 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 should have been there. And so, um, more than likely, Brother Shaw didn't write more than half of the stuff. And and this is how you know if it's if it's real scripture or not. Does it lead you astray from the Torah? If there's anything ever that says we should be following other gods or doing something else or that the laws of God are gone, then obviously we need to pick up rocks and start chucking it at the person who wrote that, right? Because that would be going against scriptures. And so that wouldn't be, you know, that's, that's wrong. And so we must study to show ourselves approved unto to Yah, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I use that scripture all the time because so many people do not rightly divide it and, and they will take two or three books out of the New Testament and they'll make a doctrine out of it and then all of a sudden they're sitting there eating pork, um, living in adultery, living in fornication and all this evil stuff and they don't know why and Yah's cursing them and they, they think they have blessings when they don't and you know that's the thing is, is you don't know how many blessings you have missed out on when you don't keep the laws of Yah. And so there's, you, we can see the curses, but you know what those curses should not have been curses. All right, let's go to the next one. This is from Stephanie, Stephanie Torres. And she goes, blessings to you in the name of Yahuwah and Yehuda. Though I missed the live chat, I thoroughly enjoyed this and learned much. And I don't even, I don't even know which one this was on. 
Uh, it was a Sabbath one. Okay. So that, was a, that was on our Sabbath one. Um, one thing I may be able to, to help humbly explain is the drinking of the blood. Many idols and religions, including worship of the devil and witchcraft, require drinking of blood. Yahuwah calls this an abomination, for the blood contains the blood contains the life for the body. This carries the same consequences as eating human flesh. Of course, the enemy is messing with the internet. It's been happening more often on many sites. I continue to look forward to these teachings as I was praying for a daily Bible devotion. This popped in again. Well, that's good. Um, Yah works in very mysterious ways. It is, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can be part of a, bi a, a devotion. And I mean, this is kind of, I guess this is what it is. I mean, we're, we're reading the stuff. We're trying to study our, to show ourselves approved. And so that gives us a little something into the drinking of the blood, right? And so it is, uh, it's a nasty, nasty um, thing but they do it nonetheless all right this is the last one is from clarissa cotton she goes as i enter this the date is 7 25 just got back from a family wedding for 10 days seeing family was great but i surely did miss my online tour family and yeah we, we missed clarissa as well we didn't know where she went and so we're glad to have you back the tour is great to read has never been wrong irrelevant or outdated torah the breath of yah one note to share you mentioned the fallen angels, their existence, and their fallen ways that have affected towards mankind. At this time, I can only think of a handful of Bible teachings and teachers that acknowledge their existence and the role they had played, have played, have played, and will be playing in the plan of Yahuwah. I apologize for the simple terms used to express the point Yah put upon my heart to express. Let us come together as the body of Yahushua and pray for one, one another to encourage, edify, rebuke, and love, equipped with power of the word and putting on the full armor of Yah every day in preparation of Yah's will to be done. Shalom. Okay, yeah, and so that is a point I really want to touch on, and I don't know if this is maybe a whole thing of itself, but without a shadow of a doubt, um, I believe that unclean spirits affect our day-to-day -day walk. It, ex it affects our animals. They affect our the, my boys. They affect me. They affect Nicole. And it is something that I believe uh, depression, right? There's a there's a demon of depression or a demon of despair or something of the sort. And the the demons, where do they come from, Kate? Um, the demons, well, one for, from hell. They come from there, but they come from like the uh, what is it, like the dead of the. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know if they or? actually come from hell. I think they're going to hell and they will be locked into hell. But originally, they came from where? Uh, I believe it was the uh, like it's like the spirits of the fallen. Yeah, the spirits of the not Netflix. the spirits of the fallen. There's, there's it's the spirits of the, the children yeah. of the fallen. So we had the fallen angels, right? We had the angels that came, and they were supposed to be. They were called watchers, and they were supposed to be hanging out with humans, and uh, not humans. They're supposed to be watching, I guess. And so they uh, decided they hatched a plan, and they decided that they were going to mingle and mate with the women, and so it they did. And what happened was a genetic mutation. Uh, that was just off the scales. And so you had the first generation, which were the fallen angels and human women, right? And that was called the um, the fallen. And then you had the first generation that was called the, was it the Nephilim or Nephilim first? Nephilim, I think. I think the Nephilim was the first generation. And then you had all of those suckers inbreeding. And then you had the Nephilim, which was yet another set. And then you had uh, the third generation of these suckers called the Eliau. And... Um, these every generation they got bigger and they got stronger and so it wasn't just i mean we're talking if you're looking at the pyramids if you're looking at um the giant things of this this world that you're like how did these people back in the day ever do this well these people were a hundred times larger than we were and they got so violent that they started they started eating man and they started eating man they started eating women and these children uh, everything all human beings they basically there was too many of them and they were too strong and so uh, a couple of angels went up to Yah and they get, they said Yah um, have you not seen this this thing what what are we to do it's the mankind is being destroyed and being ravaged and so Yah cursed them and so he had the fallen and he took all the fallen angels right the dads of all these evil things. And they're all locked in chains. Um, one of the main one is tossed into a rock, into a hole with sharp rocks and no light. Um, who was that? Uh, Azazel. Azazel, <clears throat> right? He was the he was the main main evil dude. And the the fallen are the people that taught us all of stuff like um, women's makeup, uh, perfumes, 
uh, all of that kind of stuff. In fact, they gave us the very first abortions. They taught women how to abort their babies and their men are like, I want these women to look very good. And so they basically started, they taught them how to kill the, the, the babies in the womb. How do they know this stuff? I do not know. But what happened was Yah cursed them and he told them that, um, he told the fallen that their curse was to watch all of their children destroy each other. And since the fallen, the humans have souls. We all have souls. The problem was the fallen and all of their offspring for probably, I don't know how many hundreds of years this went on, but all of the offspring had no souls. And so when they die, they were left here on this earth to roam and to get us and to basically it is the for, the far, the the forces of darkness that are against us. It's not just a roaming lion, uh, evil uh, Hasatan, but we are up against probably millions, millions of demons and the millions of demons walk amongst us and their job is to get into our heads, into our children's heads. Their job is to um, break the bond between Yah and us and lead us down into the same path that they are going to be going. They're evil, they're vicious, their job is to destroy humanity and if you look at the world that we are in today, where literally every leader of every country across the world has, has gone into great evil and is trying to crush the entire world, the devils and demons are able to get into humans. They're able to open up. And that is why drugs and alcohol and things of that nature, even trauma. The, the demons will take us. When, when we have times of trauma, when we're down, when we're broken, we absolutely have to be in prayer to Yah. We absolutely have to have the forces of light to fight these forces of darkness. And I do not believe that we go through a single day without having unclean spirits try to take us out in one way, shape, or form. And so it is something that we all need to be aware of that it's not just, you're not just waking up super depressed because that's the way it is. You're more than likely filled with some sort of unclean spirit and we must seek Yah. We must seek the blood of Yahushua. The only thing that is able to fight this is the blood of Yahushua, which is why when we call upon the blood of Yahushua, things need to scatter and they need to go away because there is nothing greater and no stronger force than the blood of Yahushua. Anyone have anything else? Um... <clears throat> Um, something for like the fallen. If uh, you read extracurricular books and don't believe in the fallen, uh, read Jasher because it talks about how Noah, how he was actually different skinned than the rest of them, and his eyes were different color. And they thought he was from one of the angels. And they're like, "What do we do with this child? I think, uh, I think my wife has mated with an angel." Yeah, he was like an albino. He came out as an albino or something. I think everybody over there had dark skin, and so all of a sudden you have a super white. Uh, guy that came out and uh, it was Lamech, right? Mm. It was it Le Lamech? Lamech went to Le yeah, Lamech. Went Lamech to was the father of uh, Noah, and he he was freaking out, so he went to Methuselah. <laughs> Methuselah goes, ah, it's it's okay. This is the, this is the chosen one, and so when we are looking as as in the days of Noah, where it was a genetic mutation, we are here today. And I will not get on the soapbox. I will stay off my soapbox today. But for those with eyes to see and, and ears to hear, when you take a snake bite, you are now genetic mutant. You are no longer human. And so it is as in the days of Noah. Here we are again today. So uh, Clarissa, uh, much love, sis, and um, to your family and to your, your grandkids and to everybody. Much love. We appreciate all of you guys. Let us get into this. And I got to do my handy dandy split screen. I got no drum rolls. Uh, there we go. And the grand says that's the best drum roll on YouTube. That's why she's our grandma. <laughs> she says that is the best. <laughs> that's something only a grandma would say. And that's why we love her. All right. So here we go. Numbers 2. And Yahoo has spoken to El Moshe and then to El Eron, saying, Every man of the children of Yashrael shall pitch his own standard with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the assembly shall they pitch it. Now, what does your say? Pitches on standard. I don't even know where. The children of Israel are camp each one by his own banner. Okay, that's the same. That's an inside, ensign, right? It's a, that is a banner. A, that's another a word. Standard yeah. is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it says standard or banner. Okay, so standard by banner. So basically, they have a flag, right, or mm -hmm. something of the sort. They have sort. like their own like logo for right. their tribe or whatever it is. Right. Okay. And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Yahuda pitch throughout their armies. And Naksan, the son of Amniadav, shall be captain of the children of Yahuda. Okay, so it's on the east side toward the rising of the sun. 
Um, so basically, this is like defending. This is since they're on the. This is the. So the tabernacle of the Mishkan is in the very center. I would assume is how this is gonna work. So they basically they're like all surrounding the Mishkan, protecting the Mishkan. Yeah. Yep. So he's on the east side, so the east side must have been the most, I assume, dangerous side, because Yehuda is the considered the strongest, the most warrior type to defend Yashorael. If you read in uh, Joshua, and right at the end of uh, Deuteronomy, you get uh, who is the uh, strongest, who's going to fight for them in Yehuda. So it's obviously the uh, most dangerous side for them that they yeah, protect. those of Yehuda were a little crazy. All right, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were three score... And 14,600. So 74,600. And those that do not pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar. The Nethaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. Did you say not camping to him? Not camping next to him? Uh, and those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. Mine said, uh, yeah, mine said, uh, those who camp next to him. Okay. And those that do pitch next to him. If I said don't, then it is do. Okay. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were 50 and 4,400. Okay. So there's, that's, we're, um, this is what I find fascinating about this entire thing is that I don't know if there were coordinated armies prior to this. I'm sure there was. I'm sure the Egyptians had this all figured out and dialed in. But Yah came out and these, and I mean, even when they were marching out of, uh, wasn't it Rama? Ramses. Ramses. Yeah, we're Ramses. When they were, they were, they left in 50s, right? They left in brigade style. So our creator knows how to go to war. Our, our creator is a man of war. He knows how to deal with this and how to make people fight right. And something to note as well, and also in uh, Jasher and Jubilees, you hear that Moshe was a king and he actually ran several armies. So he is, as the head of this, knows what he's doing as well. Yeah, yeah. These people are, are people of war. All right. Uh, then the tribe of Zebulun and Eliav. The son of Kelon shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Yahuda were a hundred thousand and four score thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall be first set forth. Okay, so all the men according to the camp of Judah. So Yahuda. Um, so we're dealing with, uh, what are we talking about? Yahud is, isn't just 186,000. No, no, this no, is what so, I was talking so, about yesterday where we have all three tribes on, on each side. There's three tribes on each side of the Michigan. So Yahud is running a tribe of 186,000. Yeah, he, ha he has Zebulun and Yitzchak next to him. So basically Yahud is the main tribe that, and basically these guys all join one tribe basically together to defend the tr camp of uh, that side. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it going from, you know, just plainsmen slaves into warriors, right? And these guys had no training, right? These guys were slaves. These guys grew up in Egypt. They grew up as workers, right? So they, they did not have battle arraignment. These guys were not, they were not like warrior bound, but the, Yah makes them warrior bound. All right. On the south side, be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. So south, so the east side was Yehuda, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And so now we have the south side, according to their armies, and the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Eliezer, the son of Shedier Ur. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitched by him shall be the tribe of Shimon. And the captain of the children of Shimon shall be Shelumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. So fifty nine thousand three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the ca and the captain of the sons of Gad shall be Eliasef, the son of Ruel, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. So forty six thousand six hundred fifty. So all that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were a hundred and hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty. That's so hard to figure that out. Throughout their armies, one hundred fifty-one thousand four hundred fifty. So you had on the east side, you had one hundred fifty-four thousand, something like that, right? Wasn't that one hundred fifty-four thousand above? One hundred eighty-one thousand. One hundred one hundred eighty-six to the east. Now the south has one hundred fifty-one thousand, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the assembly shall set forward with the camp of the Levium in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies. And the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elisham Shema, the son of Amenehud, and his host, 
and those that were numbered of them were 40,500. Now, is this, what size is this? This is the west. West, okay. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamiel, the son of Pedasher. So, who's Manasseh filling in for? Levi. Well, 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 because Levi says well, in the middle, so there would be. Who's there the be son of Manasseh? Or who's the father Joseph, of Manasseh? Joseph. Yeah, so, so who is who is he filling in for? Joseph. Manasseh and Ephraim are. Are they? Joseph. Are they together? They're both together. Yeah, on right? the same side. Yeah. But yeah. since you since you have twelve tribes and you put Levi in the center of it, you wouldn't have three on each side, so you have to separate Manasseh and Ephraim. Right. Okay. So that's interesting, though, because this would be the tribe of Joseph, mm-hmm. is who it would be. But instead, but, it, it split off. He yeah, he was able to have two. Yeah. When that happened, is because. Uh, uh, the way that he blessed them and how he basically made them hit Jacob basically made him his sons when he blessed them. He's like, these are my sons now because he didn't like get to know uh, Joseph for like years on end and basically he saw his kids and basically these are like my sons now and basically yeah. made them the tribes instead of Joseph. That was huge. That was a huge upgrade. It's not just instead of Joseph. I mean, I would rather have, instead of me have a tribe of Jason, I would rather have a tribe of Jaden and Caden and Eli, right? If you were able to split off that and that becomes like a top tier group, that would be an amazing honor. Okay, um, and by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamiel, the son of Pedachur. Pet- what you guys say? Nah. Pedachur. Pedachur. How's it actually supposed to be pronounced? Pedasur. Pedasur. All right. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Benjamin and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Avidan, the son of Gideoni. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. So on this side, we basically have all Rachel's kids on this side, right? And this is the west side. West side, yeah. West side. All right. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were a hundred thousand and eight thousand and a hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward into the third rank. So this is much smaller. The west side, west side is one hundred eight thousand one hundred. So um, I guess the west side is lesser to be attacked. So you got Yahud on the right, you got Reuben on the Reuben on the south. bottom, then you have uh, these guys. Who's this over here? On Manasseh. The west, Manasseh on the west side. Okay. Oh no, no Ephraim, Ephraim, my bad. Yeah, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. So. Okay, yeah, Ephraim, and they're both there. Ephraim and Manasseh are both there. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so twenty-five. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Akiz Ezer, the son of Amniashare, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were three score and 2,700. So 62,700. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Ashur, and the captain of the children of Ashur shall be Pegilel, and the son of Akron, and his host... And those that were numbered of them were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Akira, the son of Enan, and his host. And those that were numbered of them were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that all they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were a hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. So one hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred. That's quite a bit on that one. So there's yeah. a, that's the third, second biggest one or third? Uh, it's, it's, second biggest. Second biggest. Yeah, so that's second biggest. So Dan's hanging out at the top. All right. Those that, these are those which were numbered of the children of Yashrael by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were 600,503,550. Now, what do we got? 603,550 is their army. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. But the Levium were not numbered among the children of Yashrael, as Yahuda commanded Moshe. And the children of Yashrael did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So they pitched by their standards. And so they set forward everyone after their families according to the house of their fathers. Okay, so we had, on the east side, we had three tribes, right? The south side, we had three tribes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three tribes. The west side, three, three, tribes. three, and then north has what? Three. Three, three times four ha- is twelve. Well, and but we have... We well, have like, gone, but we split Joseph and if, if, if Ephraim and uh, Manasseh were all on the same side... They're two different split. tribes. They're, they're considered two different tribes. Right, but we if we had... What I'm saying here is I think the north tribe didn't have three tribes in it, right? Yeah. It had Gad. It had Gad, Asher, and Dan. Gad, Asher, and Dan. Okay, so there's actually like 13 tribes then. 
Yeah. Yeah, except the Levites didn't weren't counted as warriors. Right. They were inside and they were like protected. Right, but that's interesting but though, because counted. the way that Yah just set that up, right? We are in it's divisible, right? Three, mm-hmm. six, nine, twelve. And then the one in the middle, we have the Levites, right? And mm-hmm. so basically Yah's temple is completely surrounded by warriors. And I think like probably have bigger tribes where the weaker points are. Yeah, and I think that's amazing that Yah would walk with us and that he would set up his own tribe, his human tribe. That's how he would set up his army right there. That is literally Yah's army. Um, and I think it's amazing. I think it's just he's a, you know, a, a creator, of not not just a creator of, of grace, 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 grace. Our creator is a creator of, of death, right? I mean, he can, he can go and, uh, not a creator of death, but he can... They're going to go and go kill, right? And so, I mean, these, this is what their job is about to be. They're about to wipe out all of these lands. And so he's taking a bunch of roughnecks, the guys that have zero skills in any of this stuff, and he's going to create mad warriors out of them, right? And we do know that the, the children of, ya- of Yaakov were warriors, right? We know mm-hmm. from the stories in there, they went and they took out Shechem and they, you know, Simeon and, uh, who was it, Simeon and Levi, Levi took out the, uh, the entire town of uh, Shechem. Uh, when they would defile Dinah. And so, yeah, these guys are warriors, but I mean, after captivity, you're not, your dad, you know, you're going to get up and you're going to go to slavery work. You're going to do all this stuff. I'm sure the Egyptians were not training these people in metals and fighting and this stuff. They yeah, would, they'd, they'd have to they'd rise up. Yeah, they'd be crazy to s- train your slaves on how to fight. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. Anyone have anything else out here? Um, no, read your Bibles. Have a nice day. Yeah, have a nice day. Uh, thanks for joining us again. We appreciate you guys. If you have any questions, comments, also the Telegram group. Yeah, we have a Telegram group, and I think I'm it's it's a it's a youth for ya Telegram group, but I, it's like I think we have more adults in that thing than we actually have youth. So I think we're just going to merge everything into one, and so I think we're just going to have a, a, a Yahoo and the Torah. Yeah, group. Yeah, Yahoo and the Torah group, and um, it will be youth. Um, Youth, uh, youth wise. How do I say? Youth based. It? Youth. It'll be. It'll be like if some, if some guy comes in there swearing or some guy comes in there whatever, we're gonna boot him out, right? Oh, it, it's it, like. It, uh, it, yeah, youth driven. It's it's going to be for the youth. We do not want family friendly. Yeah, family friendly. Thank you very much. I'm just getting too old. Yeah, family friendly is what it, this is, and so we we want everybody of every walk. But if you're there just to. Uh, be vile or evil it doesn't need to fall in the eyes of the youngsters and uh, you know the eyes of the windows to the soul so that's the last thing we want in that so i think we'll open it up for everybody um and then tonight tonight's are we spanish tonight's spanish yes we have we missed it yesterday we had some struggles here in this house but we will get through it and so we will try to get our youth for ya in spanish out tonight and then tomorrow night is english tomorrow youth. night is english yeah so we have a busy plate here so um yeah, we have a busy plate for y'all, and I hope you guys have a busy plate for y'all. I hope you guys are out there teaching and preaching and talking to people and, you know, telling everybody about the Besorah. What is the Besorah, Eli? It is the good news of Yahushua HaMashiach. Yeah, the good news of Yahushua HaMashiach. Jaden, take us out of this. Where, where does salvation begin? It begins at the stake or whatever Yahushua was hung on the cross. What stake? Are we talking like Arby's? Or no, we it's, talking, like what kind a, of it's kind of like a tree. A tree. It's, it's okay, a so tree. It's a, a lot of people say it's a cross, but they actually didn't hold them up like that. Um, they was probably on a tree, so in a different kind of a thing. So when people, how does that begin? What do you mean it begins on the stake? So basically we have salvation and we have a chance at repentance by believing Yehoshua, by using his blood to heal, to heal our sins, to forgive our sins. Because back then when we did sacrifices, we didn't have full repentance. We didn't have true repentance. But with Yehoshua, we have a second chance. We have a chance at entering eternal life and yeah, it, not it, dying with our sake exactly that. but that chance does not give us a, a sin card right this there's there's sets of laws and if we are unserious about keeping the laws of yah then then you know messiah yahushua told us that they would tell us to depart from them um ye workers of iniquity and um working iniquity is simply lawlessness if you do not know you do not know what sin is unless you know the torah and so if you do not know the torah and you've tossed it on the tree or you tossed it on the anywhere in the trash, as most people do, then um, you don't know what sin is and you'll be living in sin and there is no, um, you're not going to be forgiven for that, right? We have a chance. Everybody has a chance to make their choice right here. Um, and we are, you know, for the, for me and my family, we will choose Yah. We will choose Yah. We'll choose Yahushua. And we thank you guys very, very much. So All right. have a wonderful day. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.